Hey what's up guys this is Save, and in this video we're going to talk about how to draft IO. So the first thing we're going to talk about is what heroes are actually good with IO. Now this hero can look for a few things to actually make it good and one of the things is going to be a person that he's going to be able to tether to consistently through the game and whether that's for making that person be able to farm really fast or to just share the unit's movement speed or to actually pair up with someone that's going to be able to really aggress early and abuse that early movement speed and the heals and everything like that. You're going to be looking for heroes that Wisp is able to tether to, that have properties of maybe being a carry in the sense of you have someone that's going to be able to farm really well and someone who's going to be a relatively strong hero, kind of like a position one type thing. Or you could be looking to other heroes that have other type of purposes like an offlane type hero that you can pair up with him and you know utilize that extra movement speed and use that hero's abilities, the offlaner's abilities to harass and spam out waves in the early stages of the game or you could be looking for something that is maybe a support type hero that you can roam with and inflict a lot of damage or you know pair up with your support hero and then try to gank whatever lane you can and then use your core in that lane you know to finish off the gank so what are some good heroes to draft with Io? Now you're generally looking for heroes that are going to be using his attack speed from his overcharge and the movement speed buff, or heroes that are just going to overall gain from being healed and buffed up from the hero in the back lines, so they'll be able to be overall tankier and have more sustain into the team fights or just laning phase. Now the good thing is Io doesn't always have to just pair up with your safe lane carry. It can also be with something like your mid lane, your off lane, and from time to time you could be pairing up with your other support to be doing plays. Which is pretty nice because that means that there are so many options for this hero to actually draft with. Now some specific heroes that work, we'll talk about position 1 heroes primarily. Something like a Gyrocopter, Luna, Phantom Assassin, and Juggernaut really work well with Io. And the reason for that is these heroes are all position 1 heroes and they all carry properties of flash farm or a lot of aggression. So for example a Gyrocopter will be able to flash farm with his abilities, Luna same with her. Phantom Assassin, same with her, and Juggernaut, if he has a Battle Fury, same with him. Now on top of that, these heroes also have insane kill potential, and if paired up with a Wisp, they can inflict lots of damage and be really scary, not only in the laning stage, but throughout the series of the game. Now some old school combos were things like Chaos Knight and Tiny, however, this has been kind of strayed away from the way that the meta change and the changes to actually the hero specifically has made these two really step down in the tier of trying to pair up with Io. But instead, it's okay, you can look towards using the other carries that I talked about prior. Now some other heroes that are not carry related, but are still core related, are going to be some offlane type heroes that Wiss is going to be good with, which is going to be Night Stalker, Beastmaster, Legion Commander, or even Doom. Now how this kind of works is you would pick these heroes and then pair it up with the Wisp, and then you would abuse the movement speed, and you would also abuse the ability to do damage, especially on the support type heroes, but potentially even the core in the lane that you're going to be in. So for example, if you pair up in the early stages of the game with a Beastmaster or a Doom or like I said any of these heroes essentially, you'll be able to do a lot of damage because all these heroes have abilities that are able to be spammed out and you know if you have just a support trying to contest you in the offlane, you know, this and that, having this IO plus this hero combo, they're always going to have to run from you 10 out of 10 times unless they're, you know, moving all their heroes from the creepy equilibrium and actually trying to go out their way to right click you. Having these two heroes paired up and just running down in your offlane and just spamming up the spells will be extremely effective and do a lot of damage. Now other heroes that can work pretty well are heroes that are going to be able to provide vision so that you can later set up your relocate ganks. So just heroes that are able to run the map or just have abilities that are able to reveal the map. So some of these heroes would be something like a Nyx Assassin or even a Clockwork would be pretty good. Now how this would work out in a real game is later on when your Nyx Assassin is level 6 he'll go invisible and then he'll detect enemy heroes in awkward positions on the map. He would initiate on the hero and then you would relocate on top of that initiation, thus hopefully securing a kill. Same concept goes with the Clockwork. Clockwork will be able to walk around the map, he's a relatively fast hero, and he has his Rocket Flare, and he can also just hookshot in and then cog someone as you set up for your relocate. Now some other type of cool and niche things you can do with Io is kind of like a global-esque strategy. So you see this with old school Alliance, if you follow professional Dota you'll know that Alliance and their TI run was pretty much propelled and fueled off of this global type of strat. So what this means is picking things like a Nature's Prophet, Spectre, Invoker, or even a Zeus. 
Now how this kind of would work out is a nature's prophet has a global presence, so anywhere he wants to be, he would set up and then you would have your IO plus another hero relocate to that area. Same concept goes for the other heroes. Spectre is able to alt, pick a target, and then you relocate on top of it. Zeus is able to alt, reveal what's going on, and then alt on top of it. Or even Invoker who can pair up with a Sunstrike wherever you are. Alright, so talking about some position 5 heroes that are going to be good with IO. Essentially what you're looking for is something that's going to compensate for your weaknesses and also help out the team in the current game what's going on. So what that means is usually you're going to want to get something that has a disable because IO only has a slow and I'd say it's pretty unreliable because you know you could try to get it on one hero and then another hero might block it. It's not like cast direct it's just spinning spirit orbs in a circle and it's pretty unreliable to actually disable somebody with that. So getting another hero especially in the position 5 form that's able to actually deal with that is pretty good. But you don't necessarily need to get another disable. You can also find the in your cores. So what that means is you can also get some heroes like a Jakiro or maybe even a Warlock that don't really have too much crowd control, but they are really good in the lanes. Because if you're going to be running in another lane with IO, like you know the mid lane or the off lane, at least you can have a hero that will be able to babysit your position one. So that lane will go pretty good or hopefully we just won't go so bad. Alright, so let's talk about some heroes that are actually bad with IO. Heroes that are going to be bad with IO are just going to be heroes that are bad for him to tether to, and heroes that don't really utilize the attack or movement speed, and really don't benefit from the health or mana regen heavily either. Another type of hero that can be really bad with IO are very hypermobile heroes, as it's really hard to keep your tether on them while this is going on. So some of these heroes, for example, would be something like a Puck, a Weaver, Storm Spirit, Ember Spirit, and even a Tinker. Now, how this kind of plays out and why these heroes are relatively not good for the Wisp, they can be picked in a game with IO for sure, but they cannot be the key component to what you're trying to do with IO. And the reason for that is, throughout the stage of the game, going away from the laning stage, IO is going to need a home. He's going to need someone he's going to be able to pair up with, and he's going to be able to need to do something with that hero and play around that hero solely. So having something like all these heroes that I mentioned, those heroes are very mobile and they really benefit from going all around places in a fight, right? You have a Puck who could blink in, orb around, coil, and then just do the same thing in 10 seconds later, okay? Same thing kind of goes with Weaver. Weaver, extreme movement speed, he's really going to overextend. But now in the case, you can actually keep up with him with the Wisp. But usually when you're Sakuching, you're running through the opponents, so that means the Wisp would have to trail along behind you, which would put him in extreme danger. Now, the Storm Spirit, Ember Spirit, they kind of follow the same suit with each other. They look like they might have been good with Io. They're able to benefit from, you know, of the add up a magic damage that the Wisp has, plus these heroes have. And then, obviously, the regen is really good for something like a Storm Spirit. But these heroes are always really zipping in, moving in behind the enemy lines, going on, you know, the squishy heroes in the back. And if Io was just to stay put with these heroes and try to, you know, chase them in, he's going to put himself way too overextended and it's just going to lead him to die out of the majority of the times. Now the last example would be Tinker. This one is the most straightforward of them all. You can't really play around this hero solely because he goes in, he spams his spells, and then he goes back to base. And what does Io do? He just waits by the tower. That's definitely not efficient. And Tinker is not a hero that's also going to be, you know, right-clicking and it's also not a hero that's really going to be frontlining, but it's kind of the opposite in this one where this Tinker might not extend, you know, might not overextend really hard in the fights, but what the Tinker will do is not play the style that you need to be playing where you need to be aggressing the enemies from like a medium distance, you know, a, a safe distance. Tinker will engage these heroes and spam his spells from a really far distance, and if you're tethered to him, there's no use to just stay on him like that. All you're doing is literally tethering him in the back lines as he's spamming out his spells. And if you weren't even there, he would be able to do the same exact thing without you. So to sum it up, Io can work with almost any hero. As every hero can benefit huge from, you know, his burst heal potential, the movement speed, and the ability to be relocated, it's not a big problem if one or two of the heroes on your team don't really synergize with Io too well, but you at least need a single hero that Io is going to be dependent on. Because although you can coexist with having something like a Storm, Ember Spirit that you can really play around with, as long as you have a core that you're able to always, you know, play around with, that'll be completely fine. Because the mid lane, you have something like a Storm or whatever, you know, you're not going to be able to play around him too much. But then you have something like 
a troll warlord or a juggernaut, you know, in your safe lane, and then that's going to be your buddy for the game, and you have, you know, your way in to flash farm and play the way that you need to play. So, it is fine if you have these type of heroes, but if you're specifically going for this hero and thinking it's good with Io, well now you guys know that it is not good, and you guys should actually not pick it like that. So let's talk about what heroes Io is actually good against. Now, generally what you're going to be looking to do, especially in the early stages of the game, is pretty much outmaneuver and out movement speed your opponents. So this is not only going to rely on Io, but also whatever type of teammates you have and how they itemize, hopefully into early movement speed type items. Because you can deal with someone who might be able to do pretty well against you in the lane, but if you're able to just have that early type of movement speed over them, then you'll be able to effectively kite these heroes and then harass them, usually without having any type of backlash to it. So although sometimes heroes may be pretty good against Io, maybe something like a Clockwork, which can normally, you know, get on top of him, stun him, and then cog him up. If you start with an allied hero that's going to go movement speed items, then you'd actually be able to take on this hero in the laning stage, because your movement speed would be higher than his, and as long as you and your partner that you're tethered to play together, you'll be able to outmaneuver that Clockwork 10 out of 10 times. So it's not so much on paper how things play out, because on paper the clockwork is someone who's actually supposed to destroy you. But in a real scenario, you know, the game starts, the first group wave comes out, and you're running through the offlane with a Beastmaster, and the Beastmaster goes wind lace first or something, you're going to be bumped up to 3, you know, 310, 320 movement speed or something like that, which is going to be over the clockworks. You went from not being able to play that lane out and being abused by the clockwork, to being able to have a chance to run around him and then as he comes in, harass and walk back, harass and walk back, this and that. So to actually understand like what IO is good against, you need to know the dynamics of how you can actually play it out with your teammates. Because unlike other standard heroes in Dota, that once you pick them, you know, you can kind of see on paper, alright, I know how this hero pairs up against the enemy hero, but IO is a little different because you can't just see it as, alright, IO is not good against this hero because you know, he right clicks harder than me, he's got more armor than me, he's faster than me, and he's got all these stuns for me, right? Io's a little more complex in the fact that you have to think, alright, well, you're right, my Io is not too good against this hero, but how is Io played? He's one of the few heroes that actually literally connects with a hero and plays with him. So, on paper, he might not be so good, right? Against these type of heroes, but you gotta think, in a realistic scenario, you're gonna have someone that you're gonna be with, and you're gonna have boosted stats from that. And also, you're gonna have your other you know, allies abilities to play around with you helping you out. So always keep that in mind because on paper IO it gets destroyed by a lot of heroes, but you really need to look into what resources you're actually picking on your team and then try to make a decision on, you know, what you're gonna be good against and what you're not gonna be good against. And also how you should be playing against it. You know, if someone has a lot of stuns and movement speed, stay away from them. If they have a lot of damage, but you might be able to outmovement them, just try to stay in the fog and then, you know, try to push out the waves and this and that. Don't try to take the people head on if they're going to do more damage than you. So some other heroes that Io is actually good against will be something like a Legion Commander. And the reason for that is even with the change to relocate, you're actually able to still relocate people out of the duel, which is really nice, although you are more susceptible to being CC'd and prevented from doing so, the opportunity to do so is still there. Also Io is really good at dealing with split pushing type heroes, so you see a Nature's Prophet or a Beastmaster pop up, you know, in the later stages of the game, you see them pop up and they're trying to split push your towers, you know, Io can just instantly get two heroes on top of that one hero who's split pushing. So this hero conceptually is very good against these split pushing type roles. So overall weak lanes, Io is also really good against. But like I said earlier, you're going to need to pair this up with the right hero on your team to actually make this work. So for example, if they have something like a Spectre, Slark, or even an Anti-Mage, if you have something like, you know, the Io Beastmaster combo, you'll be able to, you know, depending on their supports, Pretty much roll the enemy carry and just harass him out, DPS and potentially kill him, this and that. Or even just abuse his supports because these type of heroes can't really step up to the plate and actually right click and, you know, zone people out. That's why they're, you know, considered weak laners. And so when Io identifies that there's a weak lane going on and you actually do have the opportunity and the resources and the tools to harass and kill the lane, that is one of the most ideal scenarios that you can actually be placed in. Now, so let's talk about some heroes that Io is actually bad against. Now, heroes that can jump in the back lines are particularly annoying. So something like a Spirit Breaker, who's going to be able to have, you know, unobstructed vision of you, connect with you with a stun, and then has a follow-up stun if they're level 6. Pretty annoying. Something like a Storm Spirit that can, you know, pretty much, depending on how much mana pull they have, zip you from any point in the map and inflict insane amount of damage. 
and other things maybe like a weaver or a clinx that are invis heroes or semi-invis heroes that have high movement speed and lots of damage and right click so pretty much they get on top of you and they just you know blow you up and if you don't have a ghost scepter or something to deal with it you're probably going to fall also something that's really annoying for io is going to be damage over time effects and it's going to be really annoying especially in the early phases of the game when you're really wanting to use that bottle to heal people or those early earn charges to heal people now the reason why it's just so annoying is that even if you have the best positioning some dots can be really annoying and tricky with their mechanics that can actually reach you in the back so something like a fatal bonds although you can be positioned pretty well it still might be able to grab you depending on how it blooms or even as simple as someone just walking up to you and you know overextending themselves just to get an earn charge on you or just to get you know some sort of dot on you that they have because that will depending on the tick of the dot that'll pretty much sum up how long you're actually only able to get your heals off for so if, if you get a dot on you that takes every 0.5 seconds you'll only be able to get like 0.4 or 0.5 amount of heals out of a bottle or you know 0 0.4 0 0.5 seconds of a heal from your urn of shadows before it's actually ticked off from that dot which will limit you pretty useless if you're really relying on those heals or your allies are really relying on those heals um, this is usually prioritized in players who have more knowledge of what's going on with this hero because I know for me personally, when I'm playing against an IO, I'll always make it my priority to get a dot on that hero as soon as I can, and even try to maybe overextend and go out of my way to do so, because I know that if the IO cannot heal the target, then that target is actually susceptible to going down. Now there's definitely going to need a special mention towards Ancient Apparition, because his ultimate ability is literally the bane of existence for io to play against he just throws your alt on you in a big aoe and then your hero is rendered essentially useless because if you overcharge yourself you're ticking away at yourself you have no more passive regeneration and if you tick yourself low enough you'll actually explode and die from the alt proc that's pretty annoying and on top of that you can't get any heals off on your allies and you also cannot get any heals off on yourself so when should you guys be looking to pick io in a ranked game now in Captain's Mode, Io is going to be a high priority pick, which means that in the first three bans for each team, it's usually first phase banned, and if it's not, you have to get it within the first two picks. Because if not, the majority of times it will be banned out. But on the other side, in all pick, now supports, as you guys should know, are usually picked early, so you might actually have to pick Io early, which is not the end of the world if you're communicating with your team saying, hey, I'm going to pick Io. You know, get ready to pick some other heroes for it. You know, we're going to go and try to have really strong lanes or whatever you're going to try to do with it. Now, it can be a possibility in all pick scenario for you to get away with picking IO potentially even third. And how that situation would go is whether you have the first pick on your team or the enemy has, you know, the first pick. It doesn't really matter because what you would be looking to do is, you know, drafting a position 5 support and then drafting your offlane type hero or drafting you know whatever hero would be good that you're already like trying to foresee that you're going to pick with wisp pick that hero so we'll go back to the example we'll say you're going to pick a doom and then what would happen is they would already pick their two heroes you would have two heroes and then you would see how their supports kind of pan out and they probably wouldn't have picked their heroes around the io because the io is not revealed in any way so maybe they pick something that's like a warlock and then on top of that they have a tusk or something on top of that now those heroes are not particularly that good for dealing with io which means that if you pick that io now and then run that doom wisp lane you're gonna have a great time in that lane and you will definitely flourish in that scenario but alternatively if you picked it you know first or second pick they might have had one of those heroes or both heroes different to actually deal with your io pick all right guys thanks for watching if you have any comments or questions feel free to place them down below and I'm definitely looking forward to getting back to them.